Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I am going to explain you all about support vector machines. Okay, so we are going to focus mainly on these four topics: margins and hyperplane, what is SVM and what are kernels and its types, the Python implementation, and then parameter tuning of support vector machines. Okay, so don't miss any part of this video, guys. This is going to be very, very informative. First of all, we will try to understand what is the meaning of margins and hyperplanes okay now if i talk of margins and hyperplanes right then i will take a simple example and try to make you understand for example guys let's say this is a number line okay just a simple example we will take and there are students in a class okay so this is this number line represents marks that a student got in the class okay and here in the green i will put some numbers here for example let's say total marks is 100 okay so somebody gets 80 somebody gets 90 somebody gets 95 okay and then on the left side somebody gets let's say 10 marks out of 100 20 marks out of 100 30 marks out of 100 right and suppose if i ask you uh, hey can you give me a decision boundary where i can find out which students are good students and which students are not good students. So here I have knowingly put 10, 20 and 30 in red and 89, 10, 95 in green because they are 10, 20 and 30 are kind of poor students and 80, 90 and 95 are kind of good students. Okay. So here it's very simple to say that you can say, hey, Aman, why don't you put a decision boundary somewhere in the middle, for example, here or somewhere here or somewhere here. And you know, all the students who are on left hand side of this boundary will be poor students. All the students who are on right hand side of this boundary will be good students. Okay. But here I have drawn three lines, guys. So, how many options we are having? Option one, option two, and option three. Out of these three options, which option is best? That is where the concept of margins and hyperplanes come into picture. Okay. So, here obviously if i take option one right then this line is too much close to the poor students which means there is a possibility that somebody who got 40 or 45 marks somebody here may be called as a good student which probably should not happen hence we kind of see that option one is not a very good option okay what happens with option three in option three we are putting it towards near to 70 so somebody with let's say 65 also may be called as a poor student which should not happen hence option three is not a very good option so option one is gone option three is gone so option two seems somewhere in the middle okay somewhere in the middle of student who got highest marks in the poor category and student who got the lowest marks in the um, you know good students category if you are able to find out a midline between these two then this is called your best separation and what we are trying to figure out here is something known as best margin okay now what is the meaning of best margin guys so this is 30 30 is your one data point on the poor student side 80 is your another data point on the good student side so you will find a midway okay you will find a midway somewhere here and you will say that anybody on left hand side is a poor and anybody on right hand side is a good student and you will have a margin for example this thing here will be a marginal data point this thing here will be a marginal data point okay and then these distances for example this is your d1 and this is your d2 so your summation of d1 and d2 should be maximized that is the optimization problem that we are trying to solve here okay now here i have taken one dimension which means one marks but this gets really complex if it is a two dimension or multi dimension but before that one more thing i want to explain you here what is the difference between hard hard margin and soft margin okay now suppose guys somebody is a good student but you know he or she, she was not well in that exam maybe he was not feeling well or something and he got 35 marks only okay and if i go by this decision boundary then that person is a poor student but in real world he or she is not a poor student so here this decision boundary is doing a misclassification but most of the data points are being classified correctly here understand this carefully guys this decision boundary 
is doing misclassification for one or two points, but most of the data points are classified correctly. This kind of margin is called soft margin classifier. Okay, so what are you, are we using here? Soft margin. Other case, suppose I do not want to misclassify any of the other observation, whatever may be the scenario. So what I will do in place of this black line here, I will draw the boundary here and I will ensure that none of the observation are misclassified. Okay, so that is called as a hard margin classifier. Okay, hard margin classifier. So this is the difference between these two. Now try to understand how things will get complex if it's a two dimensional scenario. Suppose this is your marks on dimension one and this is your, let's say age of the student, just a hypothetical situation. And here, let's say they are poor students. And here, let's say they are good students. Just an example, okay? So what may happen is in place of a point, we can draw a line like this, okay? And we can say that, hey, you know, anybody below this line is a poor student, above this line is a good student. But there is a very good possibility that some of these, these guys will, will fall here and some of these guys will fall somewhere here. That is a very good possibility of that. In that case, finding the separating hyperplane becomes really, really difficult. And that is where comes the concept of something known as support vector machines, okay? So support vector machines is also based on the concept of margins, hyperplanes, maxima, uh, maximization of the distance, width, and this, this that I explained just now is called widest street, widest street problem or widest street solution. So widest street solution, SVM is also dependent on that, okay? But how SVM is different? So SVM uses something known as a kernel, okay? Kernel. Now, what is a kernel? Kernel is basically trying to find a dividing hyperplane by modifying your data, okay? Trying to find a dividing hyperplane by modifying your data. Now, how many dimensions the data is here, guys? Two dimensions, okay? Suppose, suppose by doing something, I extend this two dimension to three dimension, okay? And in that case, these two additional data points, which was problem in original data, may also get classified correctly by some hyperplane, okay? In that case, what will happen is SVM will help you to, you know, increase the dimension of your data and then it can be classified very well. Let me, let me write it here, age marks okay so age is let's say 20 21 marks is let's say 90 80 just an example so there can be a third dimension dimension 3 okay this can be 20 square plus 90 square 21 square plus 80 square so what i'm doing is from this two dimension data i'm creating third dimension three dimension data uh, additional dimension and what I'm hoping is that additional dimension will help me in separating the classes in a better way. Okay. So that concept is called kernel trick in SVM. And this is this entire concept of machine learning is called support vector machines. Now, why support vector machines? Because we are using a kernel trick and the hyperplane that I told you just now, the dividing hyperplane, right? And there will be two marginal lines here. One marginal line, second marginal line. Okay. So first marginal line, suppose it passes through one vector here, one data point here, and this marginal line, suppose it passes to another data point here. So these two data points, this is data point one, and this is data point two, is called support vectors, okay? So D1 is support vector one, and D2 is support vector two. Why? Because based on these two nearest data point, I'm trying to create that margin. So in this case, this 30 will be your support vector, and this 80 will be your support vector, okay? The nearest data point to the decision boundary in both the classes. So what we understood till now, guys, what is the meaning of margin? What is the meaning of hyperplane? Hyperplane is nothing but basically that dividing entity, okay? It can be a line, it can be a plane, whatever it is, okay? Support vector machines and what is kernels, okay? Now I will be focusing more on implementing this in the real world, okay? How you can use SVM, I will not go into too detail of mathematics, otherwise you will confuse. Let me take you to the this one, okay? And here I am just doing the basic stuff. 
and understanding the important parameters is important guys there are four important parameters in svm let me write it here four important parameters in svm one is called c other is called gamma okay remember this okay third is called kernel and fourth is called poly okay so remember these important parameters for svm that i am going to tune and show you so kernel what is kernel kernel is basically what type of hyperplane to fit you can fit in in kernel you can fit different types of hyperplane different types of decision boundary so here you can say linear or you can say poly or you can say rbf these are different different types of kernels in svm so if i say linear kernel suppose my data initial dimension are x1 and x2 are two vectors okay initially if you say linear then maybe it will be dot product of x1 and x2 if you say poly then maybe it will be x1 into x2 plus uh, your kernel coefficient that you can write here b to the power d okay d is your this thing poly how much power you want to raise this, these are some of the mathematical concepts i will not go into much detail how kernel is prepared okay and then rbf kernel has a different formula like that so this is about different types of kernel now what is c c is basically a trade off between smooth decision boundary and misclassification suppose if you say that give me a high c that means you are telling to the model that do not misclassify however complex the decision boundary becomes okay so in this case let me go to my board that i drew here in this case your decision boundary will look very very complex because one of these data point is here other is here this cross is here this circle is here so if you if you make your c very very high right it means that you do not want any kind of misclassification you don't care about the smoothness of decision boundary which means you are inviting model overfitting okay i will i will show you that now similarly gamma gamma is another parameter that tells you that for non linear kernels not for linear kernels higher the value gamma it tries to exactly fit the data if you give a very high gamma value it will again move towards the overfitting direction okay and what is degree degree is up to what power you want to raise for example here i have raised to 2 power if you want to raise 3 power 4 power what power you want to raise okay that is your degree in your poly it is applicable to poly in only okay these are four important parameters what i am doing here i am just importing iris data okay and then i am taking some two columns of the iris data and i'm 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 setting c is equal to 1 c is your svm regularization parameter okay and i'm setting three types of kernels here if you see kernel is equal to rbf kernel is equal to poly and i'm giving different different values gamma is equal to 0.7 degree is equal to 3 and what i will do is i will plot all these don't worry about the plots and all i will tell you what is happening here there are three models that i am fitting okay in all these models now i am putting c is equal to 1 what is c c is your come here and see trade off between smooth decision boundary and misclassification so if i give a higher value of c that means i am telling to the model hey become complex i don't care but give me the proper classification similarly if i increase the gamma value i am saying i want the better classification however the decision boundary is getting created this is for non linear kernel which means rbf kernel okay and poly kernel i am saying degree is equal to 3 to start with and c1 i am keeping if i plot this right you will see here guys all these things will get plotted okay simple and simple vita are my two dimensions of the data this is your linear kernel which means linear decision boundary and you can see that model is saying all these come under there are three different categories in iris data right so category 1 category 2 category 3 this is decision boundaries linear rbf decision boundaries are different because that will not be linear because the mathematical function is different as i told you right and svm with polynomial will be different because this is a again different mathematical function now what i wanted to show you guys if i come here and change in in a, in rbf right if i come here and say in place of gamma 7 i say 700 let's say 700 what i am saying here 700 700 means i am saying i don't care how complex the model becomes but give me the proper classification now you will see what will happen to the model here 
see here the model is totally changed it is getting very very complex okay it is trying to do the proper classification but at the same time kernels are getting very very complex which means this model will be overfitting very high chance that this model will overfit now let's come here in place of gamma let's let's take gamma to original let's say 0 0.7 and see if i make let's say 500 okay so c 500 means what i'm saying is i don't care about the decision boundary make the decision boundary complex so if you'll see decision boundary has become complex here okay make the decision boundary complex but give me the better classification decision boundary has become complex just to tell you guys if you keep these numbers low gamma number c number degree number your model is simple and flexible if you make these numbers high possibility of overfitting of your model okay and let us try to find out the best parameter using grid search cv here so i'm saying grid search cv param grid i'm giving some c and some gamma values on the same data actually and i'm trying to fit uh, you know find what is the best c and gamma value for me you can see here it is fitting on all my given value and it is kind of telling me in the end this is my optimal c and optimal gamma so this way you can run on various kernels as well and find out optimal c and optimal gamma for your case okay so what all we learned guys in this lecture we learned about hyperplanes and margins we learned about svm and kernels we learned about how to run that in python we learned about important parameters and parameter tuning okay so what you have to do you have to take a different data and you have to implement svm you have to play around with the parameters that is the most important thing in svm guys believe me play around with parameter learn to tune the hyperparameters okay so let me know what questions you have guys please give me a thumbs up if you like this video i'll see you all in the next video guys wherever you are stay safe and take care